Alright, this is my beginner's tutorial to uh, Inventor Autodesks. Uh, this is the 2014-12 edition. And I'm going to be starting from the, from the base. We're going to work our way up to the more advanced stuff. But this is strictly for uh, beginners, people that haven't even used the software at all. I'm going to be showing the, the real basics of this um, program. Uh, so to begin with, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up uh, inventor as I already have done just clicked it on um, you're gonna have a box that pops in front of you has like the updates their news all that kind of stuff um, I already exit out of this this is just the blank what uh, opens up with inventor now what we're gonna do now is start um, our first part and our first part is going to be um, a phone um, in reality you should do like a phone or anything with multi parts in multiple um, multiple parts and then assemble them but uh, for this case we're going to stick to one part um, and then I'm just going to use the phone because you know phone has uh, multiple uh, different approaches to getting it done and uh, different uh, features I'm going to have to use in order to get there so it sh will show a lot of the tools and then I'll branch off to the ones that I haven't done but um, I think the phone will give us the most uh, ability to show off most of the tools uh, so the first thing we want to do here is um, first open up a um, new project here so you're going to go ahead and click on the new and you're going to slide right over here and you want to get the standard IPT this is just going to be a standard part um, if you're working with metal or a thin uh, thin surface or something like um, you want the surfaces with no thickness we go into the sheet metal IPT but we're going to do a standard IPT for right now this is just like uh, beginners right here and you're going to be approached with just a blank screen Right now you're probably not going to be able to see anything, completely blank, and you just have an origin, and you see down your left hand uh, side here, you get your Y, X, and Z, and that is relative to how it will be sitting. If I go ahead and I click on the front, that's the orientation that is going to be um, naturally, that is your, uh, like your home view of it. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is we want to take our phone, which let me get me on my get my phone out of the case here. I'll go ahead and look at this and then we'll figure out how we're going to approach to actually make this into the actual uh, program. So I got an HTC One here. Alright, a little bit complex. And uh, the first thing we want to do is figure out how I'm going to orient it. Um, do I want it to sit in front of you looking like this? Do I want it to be laying down flat? And so on. Now this is really doesn't matter but it just saves you a lot of time to figuring out how to set the normal view and all that kind of stuff um, so it's easier just to have it done in the orientation that you find to be the most appropriate so that way you don't have all your axes uh, all messed up I'm going to want to have it sit in front of me like this to me it's going to be like this but to you it'll be looking at your screen like this alright now the second thing I want to do is uh, find the the least, uh, sorry, the most complex shape going on here. Um, right now, I, I'm going to try and do it from the front facing. So, when you work with Inventor, you're working with a um, a sketch. So I'll go ahead and that's going to be your first thing. So you're going from 2D to 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and find my plane here I want to work with. As you can see, it's kind of laying up. Now this one's facing directly towards me, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and I'm going to go say create 2D step sketch here probably going to want to zoom out a little bit here because it is in a relatively small area and if I'm not mistaken I should be set inside inches alright so I figure that this is going to be my most complex um, shape is the out front facing of this here um, other more complex shape that would be uh, extruded would probably be this side right here where you have the arch and the flat surface and your two walls on either side but I find this to be the most complex shape on the front, or the easiest thing to be working with. All right, so we want to take this, and if I'm just looking at it just like this, that's the shape I want to make. Square with some rounded edges. So then I'm going to bring up my handy dandy little um, caliper here. You can use a ruler too, but I find the digital caliper to be a heck of a lot easier. So the first measurement I'm going to do is I'm going to do the width on it, obviously. Most of you guys can figure this out. Oh, it's not too hard. Go 
ahead and squeeze right down on it. And this is going to be rough. I'm not going to be doing this too accurate. So I'm just going to go ahead and round that baby up to 2.7 inches in width. Yeah, 2.7. Yep, 2 Alright, and since it's going to be a rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and grab a rectangle tool. It's going to be right here. And I'll show you how to get the rounded edges on you first. And I'm just going to drag it out to anywhere. And then it looks like I zoomed out way too far, so we're going to go ahead and zoom right back in here. This is going to go really small when I do this. And we're going to grab our dimension tool. Now, this is how we're going to actually start uh, getting our dimensions in there. So uh, go ahead and click on dimension tool. Click on this line right here. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Set that dimension out there. Now it's going to ask that. Now if I click on that line and pull it out, it's going to ask me how high is that. Now, me being me, I accidentally clicked on the wrong line and I measured a lot of things. So now we're going to go ahead and measure the height. So I'm going to go ahead and zero it. Measure the height over here. And it's going to be 5.4 inches. So. 5.4 inches and then we're gonna go ahead now it does not leave your tool off I'll let you know that so once um, you have in dimensions it will not leave that tool of the dimensions until you either click on a brand new tool or hit the escape button or if you may have found this out by accidentally clicking or right clicking on the screen but it will bring up that and then you can go ahead and select your escape tool there we're not going to do that, we're going to do that there. That's just something to know about this. And we're going to go ahead and click on the opposing line here. You can see way too big and way too zoomed out. We're going to go ahead and type in our 2.7 dimension that we had previously on there. And I could scroll into this with the wheel. That works too, but um, if you just want to do it really quick, click on this little button right over here. And since my dimensions are out here, it actually zoomed out there too. And go ahead and exit out of my dimension tool. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze these little guys in here, get nice and close. And right here is your little modifying glass kind of tool. And it looks like it doesn't want to... What is it doing there? It's because this, this little dude here is way too big. I'm just deleting and deleting this so I can just show you like that button there. So excuse my confusion if this is confusing you. But I am just trying to go ahead and show you that zoom function. Okay. So let's say I'm zoomed out here and it's a little thing and I got lost. I go ahead and click on it. It's going to zoom right into it so it has everything fitting in there. The reason why it didn't work before is because my dimension lines were massive. So I was trying to fit the dimension lines with inside the zone. But me deleting them and then remaking them smaller, obviously it fit to the screen a lot better now. Alright. So right now we have a rectangle. Looks kind of like it. But we're missing the rounded corners if you don't notice on here. So kind of want those bezels on the side here. Now... In order to do this the quickest and easiest way, we're going to go ahead and figure out, well, what's our radius. So I'm going to go ahead and guesstimate this with my caliper here. And I'm going to say, I'm looking at, I'm looking at about a quarter of an inch uh, radius on that fillet. That's what I call it. It's called the fillet on the side when you round the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here. And you're going to go ahead and select your fill tool. All right. Now you can also just click F. All right. Now it's going to bring this up prior. Before we uh, did this, you, you clicked on it, then you dimension. It's reversed with the fill it and for the chamfer. Chamfer is a slant or an angle. Um, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter in our dimension of 0.25. 
into the fillet, hit enter. Now we're still in the tool. So now we're going to go ahead and click on one and click another. Oh well, sorry, my mistake. You have to have it up. Enter just kind of shoots you out of it. My mistake. Um, so I already selected one of the walls, click another, and it made that 0.25 fill up there. So go ahead and click on one wall, click on the opposing one, another chamfer. One there, one there, chamfer. One there, one there, chamfer. So you're basically just clicking on the two lines that are connected at the corner, and it will fill up the corner on that side. So now we have a rounded face, and to me, I don't know about you, but that looks like the outside of my phone. All right. So remember, we're going from 2D. Now we're going to go into 3D. So now that we can do now is go ahead and cancel out of this. Go ahead and hit the under button, or you can go ahead and hit the red X. Anything you want to do, right click and come out of it. it there's multiple ways of doing. It. There's fast hand, slow hand, but I'm just going to show you button clicking because that is the best way of doing this. Um, you know, for beginners. I do shorthand, I just hit F, I just hit different things like that on the board that are in relation to the actual tool, but we're going to just go ahead and click on the buttons. And if you don't already know this, but if you are a little bit confused about a tool, just go right ahead and hover your cursor over it, and the first thing it'll do is get your shorthand, which is your fillet, F, um, and then right down here it'll actually tell you a step-by-step -step process of how the actual tool works, so you can see it clicked on one wall, clicked on the other wall, and then it made its fillet. And, and you can go ahead and press, uh, I think it's like F11 or F1. And F1 will actually give you more help and a step-by-step -step guide. All right, so now we have that. Um, we're going to want to go ahead and figure out the depth of this, how thick the phone is. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that. Once again, bring up my caliper here and squeeze right down on there. And it looks like we got... 0.37. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and finish the sketch. That means that we have finished our 2D, and now we're ready to move into 3D. So I'm gonna go over here and click our extrusion. It's gonna take a little bit for some computers. I'm running multiple things here, so it's a little bit slower now. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and type in our 0.37 into a our extrusion here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. I'm going to show you and see how it's like just going out of there. Um, just for the sake of it, uh, I would go right ahead and just use this. That would be good. Um, that would not really do too much. Uh, but since I want everything to be pointing in the positive direction, in this case, Actually, no, my, my orientation is facing towards me, so never mind. I'm going to leave that. But if you wanted a positive direction, or if your orientation was uh, backwards, you can go ahead and use this little flip tool. Now extrude in the opposite direction. But for right now, we want to uh, extrude into the positive direction. So you can go ahead and do that. And we're going to hit the OK button. So now you actually have a 3D object half the battle and now you can see that's probably the best shape you're going to get right off the bat as you can see it does not look like it has the form factor of the phone it just looks like I you know just made an iPhone the size of an HTC one so now we want to get that curved surface in there and then like we said that was like the fight between the two we had the, the first the frontal which was the most complex extrudable one surface we could find or we had the arched with the two sides on the foam. Now in this case, you kind of want to work from the most complex down to the simplest. In my, that's the way I do it, because I'd rather get all my complex figures done in one big giant thing, just like I did with all those fillets on all the corners, than have to go back and use different tools in order to get them. So I'm trying to save steps by making the most complex, biggest uh, center I can find. In that case, it was the frontal face. Now I'm going to move on to the second thing, or the you know, equivalent of it, which would be that rounded back of the phone. Now what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to want to go ahead and zoom in on here. And now instead of selecting one of those planes that we were working on before, we're going to go right ahead and we're going to set the sketch to the back side of the phone right here. 